So this afternoon, I want to share with us something I feel is not too discussed <clears throat> often these days. Something I feel we all need because of the times that we are in. We want to look at the blessedness of Christian fellowship. The blessedness of Christian fellowship. Before I came up here, I was just asking my sister, is there any difference between fellowship and the church? And he said, mm, there is no, there is no, you know, distinct, distinct uh, line between fellowship and the church. The church, as we know, is the body of Christ. The church is made up of you and I. And I will look at fellowship as when we gather together to partner, to share, and to pray. Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47, and I read, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers, then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now, all who believed were together, and they had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having fear and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This was the life that the apostles that they had. They meet every now and then, as often as they can. They broke bread. They shared the word of God. They prayed. And God added to their numbers. Not only that, they also were concerned about the welfare of those that came to their meetings. So that was the church that the early apostles that they experienced. First John chapter 1, verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from our sins. So fellowship is not new. It is something that we have been devoted to. It is a concept that we have practiced here in ICC. I was going through the ICC's handbook. We have ICC's vision, and it is in threefold, to help you get in touch with God, with others, and their divine destiny. That is one of the vision, or the vision of ICC, to help you and I get in touch with God, with others, and our divine destiny. In accomplishing this vision, there is a need for us to emphasize fellowship meeting with each other, partnering with each other, praying for one another, praising God, seeking the face of God and believing God for our day-to-day -day existence. God never created us to be in isolation. He created us so that we can what? Spur ourselves to do greater works. This morning we are praying upstairs and we looked at preparing the church of God for exploits. And we saw that God has given us different talents, different gifts. And we need to use this to build up the body of Christ. So in fellowship, one of the things that we do is to build ourselves up by the various degree amount of gifts and talent that God has bestowed upon you and I. He wants us to maximize the blessedness of this fellowship through our relationship with one another. God wants us to stay connected to the source. 
If you unplug your phone or your television, what will happen? It may stop transmitting signals because it is disconnected from the source. God does not want this to happen. That is why today we are trying to emphasize the need for us to continually meet as we are doing today. Unfortunately, the enemy, the devil, is throwing different arrows, trying to make sure that we don't meet as often as the early apostles as they did. In that as chapter 2, from verse 42 to 47, we saw how they were meeting every week. We saw how they were praying together. We saw how they were breaking bread. And we saw how God wrought wonders in their midst. I find something very, very interesting in Christianity.com. How COVID-19 affected church attendance. I'll just give a brief statistics from the USA. And it says, prior to the pandemic, about 75% of Americans, they said they attended church at least once in a week. Sorry, once in a month. But after the pandemic, that number dropped from 75% to about 68%. This is as at 2022. We all know that before the pandemic, churches in Denmark we were all coming together. And during the pandemic, the enemy struck. It brought something that made almost every one of us here to stay back at home. And even after the COVID era, what happened today? Church attendance has reduced. Many churches could not even recover from that shock because nobody ever expected that something like that would ever happen. Fortunately for us in ICC, we have already adjusted to online programs, and we just moved into that uh, scenario seamlessly. Attending church online is good, but coming together physically is even what better. What is get in touch? Get in touch is synonymous with the word to connect, to reach out, to maintain contact, to address, to access, to relate, and to approach one another. God doesn't want any man to live in isolation, and hence, we need to what? Get in touch. How do we do that? Through fellowship. I am going to define fellowship this afternoon. What is fellowship? The word fellowship is translated from the Greek word koinonia. Everybody say koinonia. Koinonia. And this word koinonia is a Greek word that it means partnership, sharing in common or communion. And the essence of fellowship is agreement or unity of purpose. In Acts chapter 2, the apostles, they who sold their property, they brought the proceeds to the church and they distributed as every man has needs. If a man needs food, they will give him money to buy food. If a man needs clothing, they will give him money to buy the clothes, or they will bring the clothes and share with one another. That was the kind of life that the apostles that they had. So, koinonia means partnership, sharing in common, and they were in communion with one another. The Cambridge Dictionary defined fellowship as a group of people or organization with same purpose. Today we are here. We are a group of people under the body of Christ with a purpose of what? Worshipping and acknowledging that Jesus Christ is Lord. Rick Warren defined fellowship as a place of grace where mistakes are not rubbed in but what rubbed out. Fellowship happens when mercy wins over justice. So he defined fellowship as a place of grace, where our mistakes are not highlighted, where our mistakes are not brought forth in our face. It is a place where mistakes are what rubbed out. It's a safe place. There's no condemnation. That is what fellowship is as he defined by Rick Warren. 
I will define fellowship as a body of believers who have acknowledged that Jesus is our Lord. How many of us agree that Jesus Christ is our Lord today? We agree that Jesus Christ is our Lord. By faith and live the Christ-like life. By practicing the teachings of Christ, while partnering, supporting each other, and being accountable to each other so that we can become better people in this life. So the fellowship of believers that we will be discussing today, they are in two folds. We have the upward fold, or the God word fold, and we also have the fellowship that is kind of uh, horizontal between you and I. So we have the vertical fellowship that is towards God, and we also have the horizontal fellowship that is towards man. So we are going to look at these two, but our major emphasis today will be on the fellowship that we have as Christians when we come together or when we meet every other day. First John chapter 1, verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So that first John chapter 1 verse 3 is describing the two types of fellowship that we have just mentioned. The fellowship with us, Apostle Paul was describing it. And the other one is the fellowship between the Father and also with the Son. So we have a vertical relationship that is fellowshipping with God and the horizontal relationship that is fellowshipping with one another. Like I mentioned, our emphasis this morning or this afternoon will be on the word horizontal fellowship. That is from you to me and from you to everyone else. Andrew Murray wrote, and I quote, Our love for God is measured by our everyday fellowship with others and the love it displays. So our love for God is measured by how we relate with one another. You cannot say you love somebody and you will not pray for that person. N.T. Wright wrote, he said the church exists primarily for two correlated purposes. Number one, to worship God and to work, to work for his kingdom. That is what the church is in existence for. To worship God and to work for his kingdom, which we have been doing. And thirdly, the church also exists so that we can serve one another. We can encourage one another. We can build up each other in faith to pray for one another, to learn from one another, and to teach one another to follow good examples. In these statements, we are going to ask ourselves these questions. What does close fellowship look like in practical terms? How are we supposed to cultivate and nurture these habits of fellowship? Especially when we don't agree on everything. It is only in the body of Christ people will pick up scriptures and they will want to quote it and turn it the other way around. We may not necessarily agree, but we have established the fact this morning that Jesus Christ is Lord. What if there are personality clashes? My personality may not appeal to you. Your personality may not appeal to me. But in fellowship, we try to set aside our differences and pursue a common goal, which is to worship God, to serve others, and to make sure that we drag as many as possible when we are going to heaven. Why fellowship? Why do we need to fellowship? Why do we even need to come to church today? Is online service good? It is good. But I would prefer us to meet what in person. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves as in the manner of some, 
but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. That is the essence of fellowship. It is a command. It is what the scripture word has given unto us. That we should not forsake the assembly of the brethren. When we come here, it is not because we don't have anything to do today. Some of us, we have important things to do. But because of the love that we have for Christ, we are trying our best to make sure that we are in the house of God to fellowship with one another. So the essence of fellowship is for us to be with one another. We are doing this because it is a command according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. To neglect Christian meetings is to give up encouragement and help of other Christians. We gather together to share our faith, to strengthen each other. The closer we are to one another, the more we know each other, and the more we have the need and the urge to pray for one another. But Antichrist forces today is doing everything possible so that we will not be gathered. Some of us, we have legitimate excuse not to be in church. We have good excuses today not to be in the house of God. Depending on the nature of our job, some of us, we work on Sundays, we work weekends, it is okay to serve humanity. But in as much as it is in your power, let us make worshiping together, let us make fellowshiping together a priority as much as we can. Because there will always be excuse. The enemy will always bring up excuses. Corona came and it knocked out most churches today, unfortunately. Many churches have not even recovered from that episode. So the enemy knows that strategy. He knows that there is power when we come together. He knows that there is nothing we cannot achieve when we come together. Hence, he will just bring sub two excuses to pull us apart from this blessedness that we are discussing today. The blessedness of fellowship. What are some of the things that you and I, we gain? Or what are the things that we are going to benefit when we meet like this as much as we can? Number one, for the strengthening of our faith and for spiritual growth. When we meet in church, when we meet in our homes, in cell group, when we meet to fellowship, one of the primary benefits or blessedness that we are going to get is for the strengthening of our faith and for spiritual growth. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tested that the Lord is good. If you are still at the level you were 10 years ago, no man or woman will want his or her child to remain an infant or a baby. We all want our children to grow. So in fellowship, we are being given the sincere milk of the word of God. A time we come, you graduate to what? Solid food. A time we come, you graduate to eating bones and biscuit bones. The hard fact will continue to what? To hit us. So in fellowship, you will be taught the sincere word of the word of the Lord. As newborn baby, we crave for good things. We graduate from milk to solid food and biscuit bones and cracking of hard bones. That is what fellowship does. It strengthens us. It builds up our spiritual man. Colossians 3 verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your heart. So in fellowship, the word of God will be preached. You hear the word of God. The word of God will be read. So let that word dwell in you richly. In as much as we can, let that word dwell in us. 
It is the word of God that will strengthen our faith. It is that word that will show us the right path to follow in life. Another blessedness of fellowship is that it is for mutual instructions, encouragement, and correction. For mutual instruction, encouragement, and correction. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatever things we are written before, we are written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Anything that we have seen in the scriptures, they, we are written for our own learning. When we come to church, when we come to fellowship, one thing we learn, we learn from our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Apostle Paul, and so on and so forth. The type of life that they lived, we glean from their lives. We glean from their own experiences. In fellowship, we are being taught these instructions. We are being encouraged. And whenever the need arises, we are being corrected. If you feel I can't be corrected, I know too much, then you don't have to be in fellowship. You don't have to be in church. But in fellowship, the Bible says that all these things we are written for our own learning. That we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So in fellowship, we try to learn from men and women of the scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The scriptures that we read today, it is the word of God. So in fellowship, it says this word is meant, number one, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, number two blessedness of fellowship is that it helps us to instruct one another in love, in line with the scriptures, to correct one another, and for correction. In fellowship, we learn from the word of God. We learn from the mistakes of men. And it helps us to navigate our ways in this world so as to avoid the pitfalls that also befell these men. We can cite many examples today in the scriptures. The life of Samson and Delilah. The life of David. And so on and so forth. All these things we are written so that you and I can what take heed to instructions and avoid the mistakes that they made. Number three, it offers opportunity to share burdens, restore a weak brethren, and pray for one another. So fellowship or coming to church today offers us the opportunity to share burdens. I may have an issue, and Prince could be of help to me, Somebody else can have a problem and share his or her body with me also. And in church or in fellowship, we have that opportunity to carry one another's body. That is one of the blessedness that we enjoy when we fellowship. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, if a man has fallen in sin, if a man has bastarded, he said, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of what? Gentleness. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Fellowship offers us an opportunity to bear one another's burden. When somebody falls, we need to what? restore such a person with love not condemnation. 
And when one is weak in fellowship, we need to pray for such a one, for that person to be restored and be brought back in the Christian fold. Unfortunately today, this may not be true. Because of the way men and women have watered down the doctrines of the apostles. Some people today, they may have stopped coming to church because of what they heard somebody said about them. Some people today, they stop coming to fellowship because they have been backbited. Some people have said all sorts of rubbish against them. If you hear something about me, come to me and ask me. Instead of you to go and say, Brother Solomon did this and that and so on and so forth. In fellowship, we would carry one another's body. If any man is falling, you would hold him by the hands and run with him. Bring him up. Build up that person in the faith and let God complete the good works that he has started in his or her life. First Thessalonians 4 verse 18. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. If you read from verse 1 to verse 18, the Apostle Paul was talking about when Christians go through different type of trials, temptations, loss of a loved ones, and so on and so forth. Specifically in verse 18, it reads, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So in fellowship, we find comfort when we are passing through rough patches in our life. In fellowship, we are being encouraged. We are being held by the hand by brothers and sisters in the church. First Thessalonians 5 verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. To tell you the importance of this, the Apostle Paul emphasized this twice to the Thessalonians. He said, comfort each other. Comfort each other with these words. Number four, blessedness, to stir up the good works in us and to keep us focused at times like this. To stir up the good works in us and keep us focused at times like this. Hebrews 11, 24 to 25. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. To stir up love and good works means to challenge ourselves to good works. I may see somebody's son or somebody's child in the public doing something I feel is not biblical. What do we need to do? We have to correct such a person. We have to stir up the love of Christ in that man or that woman so that the person can live up to the expectations or the standard that Christ wants us to live. In fellowship, we need to stir up the good works that Christ has embedded in you and I. You may be in church, but are you in touch with God? You may be in church, is your mind here? Yeah, I saw a meme, I don't know whether it was Oof that sent it to me, or maybe somebody else. The man was in church, he was thinking of the pub. Another man was in the pub, he was thinking of the church. So, being in church, you have to be in touch. Not just with God, but with other brethren. So, being in fellowship helps us to stir up the good works that Christ wants us to manifest. Another blessedness that we are going to look at is to make the gospel more visible in the dark world. To make the gospel more visible in the dark world. John 13 verse 35 by this, all we know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And 1 John 3 verse 11, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. Love conquers all multitudes of pitfalls. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love does not envy. As we have seen in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 to 13. So, 
one blessedness that we are going to cultivate is that fellowship makes the gospel more visible in the dark world. If we love one another as commanded, and the characteristics of love as displayed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you discover that love is kind, is patient. Love is not puffed up. Love does not show envy, and so on and so forth. When we build up our lives in line with the, in, in, in line with, with the word of God, and we have that love that we have cultivated, you discover that there will be peace, there will be joy, there will be what? Harmony. Because being in fellowships help us to grow in love. Helps us to grow in love. And this love will be visible to the dark world that we are in today. If there is love, there will be no war. If there is love, there will be no strife. If there is love, there will be no envy. If there is love, there will be no quarrel. If there is love today, the home will be at peace. Fellowship with the people of God helps us to cultivate this blessedness so that we can show the world that there is a difference between light and darkness. Number six, when we fellowship with each other, one thing I find striking is that we can see the hand of God in the lives of believers and glorify God, the Father who is in heaven. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all are bound towards each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. In fellowship, we see a demonstration of the hand of God in the lives of believers. I just thank God for ICC, and I thank God for some of us today, who I know some years back, when they will say, come and lead in prayers, some of us will run away. Some of us will not want to come up, because we are not confident but in fellowship, when we have built each other, we can see the hand of God in our lives working. That alone is a testimony that I want all of us to keep. I know some of us seated here today, we were not like this some years ago. God has transformed us by the speaking of his word in our lives. God has transformed our lives. We are seeing the hand of God moving mightily in our individual lives. In fellowship, we see all these things and we are being encouraged. We share testimonies. We share praise reports. We see the hand of God in the church and in various ministries and we are bound to say, Lord, thank you. We have seen the hand of God in healing. We have seen the hand of God in our individual careers and pursuits. These are enough testimonies. The Apostle Paul, he wrote and he said, we are bound to thank God always for you. Because they are seeing a difference that the word of God is doing in the lives of these individuals. We need to thank God for the growth of faith. We need to thank God for the miracles that we see every day. We need to thank God for the lives that are being transformed when we come together in fellowship. Fellowship brings about healing and deliverance. In our main text, we saw that as they gather to pray and to praise, God increased them. How did God increase them? By rotting wonders in their lives. James chapter 5 verse 16, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So in fellowship, we have the opportunity to pray for one another. And it brings about healing and deliverance. I'm not trying to condemn you meeting somebody to pray for you. 
But I know, I have experienced it. We all, we have done in one time or the other. When we meet together, when we share our body, when we pray for one another, we can see the hand of God doing wonders. So he said it brings about healing and deliverance. When we say bring prayer requests, we are not doing it for fun. We are doing it because we know that the power of God is present to heal and to deliver. James put it very uh, simply. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. And uh, lastly, I have many, but I'll just stop at, uh, because of time. Through fellowship, we stay connected to Christ and we are able to bear fruits. John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. Remain in me and I also in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and are in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So if you must stay connected, if you must bear fruit that we are bound, we need to use this opportunity of gathering together as much as possible, as much as we can, if we must stay connected and bear fruit. If you cut a tree today, the tree may remain fresh for about a week to maximum one month. After one month, believe you me, no matter how strong that tree is, the tree's color is going to change because there is no nutrient connected to the source again. If we want to remain relevant spiritually, if you want to remain rooted, if you want to grow, if you want to bear fruit, fellowship gives us the opportunity to remain connected and to stay connected and to what? Draw nutrients from the power of God so that we can grow and bear fruit. For us to maximize this blessedness that I have just outlined, we must be fat. I got that word from my sister, Precious, last week. And I told her, I said, please, I'm going to use this in my sermon today. And she said, please go ahead. If you want to invest this blessedness that I have just mentioned, you must be fat, F-A-T. F there means faithful. A there means available. And T there means teachable. You must be faithful. You must be available. You must be teachable. If you want to glean from the blessedness of fellowship, you must make yourself a faithful Christian. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God. If you want to glean the blessedness of fellowship, number one, you must be faithful. To be faithful means to be reliable, to be steadfast, unwavering. It is carefulness in keeping what we have, what we have been entrusted with. It is the conviction that the scriptures accurately reflect reality. Biblical faithfulness requires belief in what the Bible says about God, His will, His existence, and His character. Being faithful means we trust that God will work His will in us. We trust that our situation on earth is nothing compared to our future reward in heaven. As a result, we do our best to remain true and faithful in our faith and in our calling. Faithfulness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. So for us to cultivate and harness the blessedness of fellowship, we must remain faithful. We must remain faithful. 
we are not talking about fair weather Christians who only come to church when salary is paid. Who only come to church when they have a new car to display. Who only come to church when the going is good. Faithfulness is being reliable. Faithfulness is being steadfast. Faithfulness is being dear whenever the need arises. Are you faithful? Are you a faithful Christian? Are you faithful in your commitment to the house of God? If you must enjoy the blessedness of coming to church or being in fellowship, you must remain faithful in all ramifications. Number two, are you available? Isaiah 6 verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. Are you a willing vessel? Are you, a, are you available to be used of God when the need arises? God looks out for availability and not our abilities we think we possess. God prefers a man to be available, then God will equip him to use him for his good work. To have abilities is good, but God wants your availability so that he can use you as a man or a woman that will be useful in his house. Are you available for God to use? Available means being ready to be used. Being ready to accomplish a particular goal or a particular tax. Moses thought he was not right for the job because he had weaknesses. But at the end of the day, he made himself available and God sent him the right man to support his ministry. And we all know the story today. So, Having a weakness is not is no excuse. But making yourself available to the use of God is what really matters. If you make yourself available, God will give you the necessary ability to accomplish even much more. Ordinarily, Moses would say, oh, I'm a stammerer. I can't speak well. But he made himself what? Available. Are you available today? Allow God to use you in his church. And number three, before we pray, are you teachable? Are you teachable? Matthew chapter 18, verse 2 and 3. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Are you teachable? I chose this scripture because by the grace of God, I'm a father of three and I discover that sometimes I tell my children what to do, especially the last one. But he will tell me what the teacher asked him to do. The, he believes that the teacher, what the teacher asked him to do is more important than what I asked him to do. So little children, they are teachable. They believe what you tell them to do, and they carry it out faithfully. I was discussing with Victoria this morning. I said I've been in Denmark for how many years now? Yeah, I can. Yeah, till I like, God dance, dance. How do you how do you say this? So, but my children, they speak Danish. They are teachable. You know, they are teachable. In the house of God, you must make yourself available and teachable. Proverbs 18, 2 and 3. He called a little, oh, sorry, Proverbs 13, verse 18. Whoever regards, disregards this, this discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever his correction is honored. We must put aside our qualifications. We must put aside our attainment in life. We must put aside anything that we feel we want to brag about. We must put aside pride. We must put aside arrogance. We must put aside anything we feel will disturb 
our mindset from being teachable. Being teachable is a foundation for spiritual growth. If you think you have attained the height of spirituality, then there's no need for you to come to church again. If we must enter the kingdom of God, then we must be like little children that accept the word of God the way it is. If you are not teachable, then there is no need for you to even be in church. You must be willing to learn from others. You must allow others to also teach you. You should make yourself teachable. You should allow the word of God to sink in you if you want to glean from the blessedness of fellowship. And I pray that the Almighty God, who has made this word available to us today, will give us the grace to not give up the habit of meeting as we are doing today. And I pray that God will also give us that blessedness that we have been taught today and give us the spirit of being faithful, of being available, and also being teachable so that the blessedness of fellowship will be seen in our lives. May God bless his word in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.